before we get into making our own Nix packages, what are Nix packages? How are they different from packages in other distros? And what is the anatomy of a Nix package? Whenever people talk about NixOS, they almost invariably talk about how many packages it has. What does that actually mean? Well, let's go over here to the search.nixos.org slash packages and take a look. It's like most distros, it's basically a big list of packages that you can very easily with just quick command have ready to go on your system. What makes Nix packages different? Most distros, their package repository is basically a giant web server filled with a whole bunch of pre-built binary packages for you to download. Nix packages are a little bit different. Instead of being an actual binary package with a whole bunch of stuff bundled up in some installation scripts, a Nix package is a Nix file, like most things in Nix OS, that explains how the package is built, where to fetch it from, checking the hash, stuff like that. So this is actually the Nix package for Vim. It doesn't actually contain the binary. This is what's stored on the repository. It's instructions on how to go get and create the binary. That being said, Nix OS does maintain a cache server of pre-built binaries, so it kind of has both. But when you're building yourself a Nix package, what you're building is instructions on how to fetch and build the source package yourself. So let's start taking a look at some, some Nix packages and see how all the pieces work together. So here I just have some generic templates. They don't do every, anything, but they're very simple and easy to follow. We'll start here with what I'm calling a standard template. It's for fetching and building a C application. So up here is all the things that are going to be included in the build environment. Um, you need a standard environment. It's basically always there. Fetch from GitHub if you're pulling from Git. GCC, make, package, config, and utils, all the usual stuff for building a CA package from source. Up here we define the name. Well, first, we have make derivation. That's the main worker function. You use this for C applications and even when you're working with just a binary release. Uh, REC here, it means that it's recursive. It's complicated, but the basic purpose of it is so that things within your package can reference each other. And then we define our source, where we're going to fetch it from. The owner is going to be from GitHub, so our owner, our version, etc. We put our hash in there. Now, build inputs are things that are actually used in the build process. So you need GCC, make, package, config, and bin utils to actually compile this binary. And then down here is just the metadata. It's description, name, link, license, and platforms. Platforms.unix means it can work on Linux or Mac OS on x86 or ARM64, whatever. So let's take a look at another template. This is for building a Go module. Very similar, few changes. You include your STD end. Instead of using the make derivation, we're using the build Go module function. We're still fetching from GitHub, defining it the same as before. Our source is fetched from GitHub, same as before. This is different, there's a vendor hash. When you're building Go, when you do a Go get, it pulls all of the package external packages that you reference in your Go file. And this checks the hash of all of your external packages. It kind of prevents a supply chain attack from happening in theory. Uh, do check false usually on Go modules. That, that would be, in a C module, that would do, be like running make test. You'll find that's usually disabled because it does th make things take longer and not even every package will include a test function. And then the same metadata, just your URL, your license, your platforms, that's all the same. And let's take a look at one more example. This is if you have a, you're building a package for an application where there's no source available, you have to pull the binary. So same as before, we define all of our variables. This is a runtime package. All right, this, this variable runtime package it doesn't, it's, it's just a placeholder. It's for, if you're building something and in the environment, when you actually run your application, you need another package installed from the Nix packages, you would list the package you need here. So like, 
it could be anything like X11 if it's an X app or whatever. You just, this, these are external packages that are not required at build time, that are required at runtime that you want packaged up in the same environment as your application. And here we have a fetcher. All this one's a little bit different. You can see that we're pulling it by the package name and then the version. And then this, this resolves to your platform and architecture. So in this case, it would be x86 underscore 64 hyphen Linux. It could be x86 underscore 64 hyphen Darwin or AARCH64 hyphen Linux if it's ARM, I believe is what it resolves to. Now don't build because it's a binary release. And then since there's not gonna be a make, make install script for it to run, we have to tell it what to do. So in the install phase, you're gonna make a binary folder in wherever your output path is. The output path is basically where in the Nix store it's put. It's not something you ever actually have to know. And then you copy your package into your bin folder and propagated build inputs. That basically means the things that we declared up here we need in our build environment, we actually want them in the environment after it's built. So our runtime package, and that's just, this would be a change to the name of any package from the NixOS package list that your, your application works with. And down here is the metadata, which is the same. So that's kind of a, a quick overview of some very basic Nix templates. And this brings us to actually building our own package. What we're gonna do is we'll take one of these templates, or we'll actually do two of these templates, and we'll fetch some source and a binary from GitHub, and we'll actually go through the process of building a working package. So let's start building our first Nix package. Let's start out with just a simple binary release where we download the release and install it into the Nix store. All I've done is, so far as make a folder and create a default.nix, which is just a very bare template, and we're gonna start there. We need to start by our requirements with std env, that's basically in everything. Same with lib. We're gonna use fetch URL and gzip. Then we need to set up our package name. So we're gonna use this package from my GitHub. It's just a simple binary release of a dynamic DNS service. package name is cloud-dtns and the release version is going to be 0.3. Now let's just go get the URL from over here. Now we can put the URL in just like that and it'll work, but it'll only work on one platform when there are, as you can see, releases for several platforms and architectures here. So let's change that. Let's make this a little more generic. So let's go version so that we can change only the most minimal amount of stuff on this if we want to redo it for the next version. So we'll put it in there. And then what's this? We have P name here, which is this. P name. And now, what are we gonna do about this? There's a built-in function. So we'll remove this and we will put stdenv.hostplatform.system. And that will resolve to the architecture and the OS type right there that we had before. So now that we've got our download URL in there, we need to get our hash, but we'll do that later. There's very easy way to get the hash, it saves us some time. Then we need to add don't build equals true. It's just a binary, there's no compiling to do. But we still need build inputs because this uses gzip to, to extract, extract the download. And the next step is the unpack phase. Unpack phase. So after we download the file, what do we do with it? Well, in this case, we're just gonna go g unzip dash c, and then our source to 
our p name, which is our package name. So this will extract whatever it downloads the temp file as to a file called cloud-ddns, and that'll be our executable. Next, we need to do the install phase. Pretty much the same thing, except we're going to make a directory in our output area, and bin, so we have a place to put our binary. We're gonna copy pname copy our package name, which will be cloud-ddns, into our output area in the bin folder, and make sure it copies it as the same file name, and then chmod plus x out slash bin slash pname, and make it executable. And the next step is going to be a description. So let's put up better description and a link to the website that it's hosted on. And this should be about it. So we're gonna save our file. And we're gonna do a nix build dash E. This says dash E is for expression. And we're gonna import nix packages. And then we're also gonna all add call package. And that's gonna call our package from our file here, put in a quote, let's see how many typos I made, actually none, okay, and this is where we get our hash. When you go to do the build, it tells you the hash that you have and what it, what it got when it hashed it. When you're doing just a single binary like this, you can just do the hash manually, it's not that hard, but when you're doing a package with a lot of files in it, the way it calculates the hash is kind of odd, so this is just the easiest way to get it, is put in a dummy hash, go to build it, it'll fail and tell you what your actual hash is. So let's try that again. All right, and there we have a result, so let's try that result. Our binary is where it's supposed to be appears to run and it will bind to this port. Let's refresh, yep. It's running and it's listening, doing what it's supposed to do. Perfect, now that in, a, in and of itself isn't super useful. So let's actually install it to our system. So what do we do to do that? First step is we essentially have to import that package and we have to do what's called a package override to pass to define the name of the package and put it in the system. So next packages dot config dot package override with an S equals packages colon and then we're gonna put cloud dash ddns equals packages dot call packet all package, and then where are we? Package slash default dot nix. And then we just go over here to our packages and we're gonna put cloud-ddns. Save as root. See how many typos I made this time. Looks like we're good. And there we go, it's installed to our system and it runs. Now let's try something different. Let's try building a package from source. Um, we'll build a Go app. I have one here called Demo App. So 
So this is a very simple template, a lot like our previous one. We're going to change the name of our app to demo app. And from this one, we're going to be pulling from my GitHub again, just this very simple app. All it does is it, uh, it's a basic web server that echoes back whatever uh, get or post arguments you send to it. So 0 0.01, the GitHub owner is me. It's M. Now for it, we'll leave our hash like that. This one has no requirements. So our vendor hash is going to be null. Vendor hash is something that Git package or Go packages use when they have a bunch of external dependencies. It will do a hash on the vendor folder, which is where Go pulls all your dependencies. It's a way to kind of double check that nothing's changed to prevent supply chain attacks. It's a pretty handy little tool. Take this out. And we need to add lib up here. So pretty simple, not much to it. Let's save it and let's try, let's try doing a Nix build on this again. Okay. And it actually wants this has been changed to vendor hash. Doesn't matter because it's still set to null. So just like in the last demonstration when we ran it, it didn't like the hash we provided because we just put a bunch of zeros. So now we have our actual hash. That built. There we go. And again, that built. It's actually generally a lot simpler when you're building from source for simple applications. So let's put that one in our configuration.nix and install that as well. So we need to basically do the same thing we did here. We'll copy and paste that line. Only give it a new name, demo app. Demo app. And then demo app. Save it as root. Let's rebuild our system. See, it's not working, so let's run demo app. There we go. It's just echoing back what we put in, something equals poo. Thanks for watching. In the next episode, we're going to make system modules for NixOS so that we can launch these as a system service and generate configurations for them.